Here is a walk around with Mark Weber and the 2020 Porsche 992. Before we watch the show, here's some details about the car. At the heart of every 911 is a rear mounted flat six engine. These days, in every model save for the GT3 and GT3 RS, the engine is assisted by a pair of turbochargers. The 2020 Carrera S and all-wheel drive Carrera 4S use an updated version of the 3.0 liter flat six from the 991.2. The engine makes 443 horsepower and 390 foot pounds of torque. Let's watch the walk around guys. Well, hello ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be out here. We're actually not far from Hollywood, so we need a twist of Hollywood here tonight. He is a star in Codename Uncle, Guy Ritchie's movie. He has been fighting in a hotel battle in Hotel Mumbai. So please welcome, I'm going to be a gentleman here, I will open the door for him. Army Hammer, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. So mate, that was a pretty tough drive for me, but did you enjoy it and what do you think of it? I mean, I don't know if you can tell, I'm, I'm still smiling. <laughs> I, I, I feel like a kid in a candy shop when I'm in one of these. I mean, it's, it's fantastic. Very gracefully done, by the way. Thank you. Yeah. Um, you got some, you got under a little bit of pressure, mate, because a lot of guys before you in the acting scene, James Dean, Paul Newman, mm. Steve McQueen, he's a legend, he's my favorite. Have you got any favorites? Because these boys love these cars, so. Yeah, no, man, I, I, think, I think you nailed it. It's, it's, uh, that's, that's pretty much the top of the list. Uh, you know, Paul Newman, for me, will always be a personal hero and a favorite, and also, as someone who loves cars, me, uh, knowing that one of your heroes is also a car enthusiast and, and a great driver is, is fantastic. I know you did one of your first drives in a 356, right? I did. I learned to drive stick shift in a 1955 bathtub speedster, a 356. And uh, my dad got the car for my mom as like a, here, you know, this will be a great car for you to drive around. But she got too many speeding tickets in it. Yeah. So oh, he yeah. said, okay, that's, that's mine now. I'll, I'll take that. And then uh, when I was about 12 or 13 years old, he taught me how to drive stick in it. And ever since then, that's really what's brought you to the brand. So yeah, you're loving Porsche this day, mate. You've been out to the Experience Center here in the past. I have. I, I, I raced out here. I came out to do the Experience with the Turbo S's and the GT3s and walked off of the course just pulsing with adrenaline and a yeah. smile that went ear to ear. And I was walking out of the building and I, I just thought, these are the greatest cars I've ever seen in my life. I hate my own car now. <laughs> and as I'm walking out the door, I see one sitting by the door and I just thought, yeah, that's going to have to be mine now. And I called my wife and I said, uh, she said, how was the experience? And I said, it was greater than what was sold to me, which is very rarely the case. And I think I'm going to be driving home in a new Porsche. And she said, no, you're not. Get home right now. Oh. I said, all right, fair enough. We'll work on her. We'll yeah, yeah, yeah. Her, mate. Well, mate, well, take a seat. It's great to have you up here. We're going to see a little bit more of you later on. So yep. give a round of applause, please, for Army. Thank you. It's now time to bring on a couple of gentlemen that have a very, very instrumental part in this car and also in previous generation 911s. But uh, for the, the sexy body lines and the interior, I'd like to welcome on stage head of Porsche style, Michael Maurer, please. Hey, mate. Hey. Michael, Ferry Porsche once said, quote, the perfect car doesn't exist, but as engineers and designers, we must do everything we can to get closer to this ideal. How the hell do you redesign a Porsche 911? Yeah, let's say since my boss is sitting over there, <laughs> I um, would tell you... Looks like there's really, a few of them. Yeah, but this is really one of the hardest jobs yeah. you can have in the car industry. But I mean, designing an icon, and this is not just an icon, it is the icon in the car industry. And uh, yeah, as I said, a pretty hard job, but uh, looking at the car so far, I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy. And uh, yeah, what did we basically? We just uh, cleaned the surfaces and straightened the lines. A little bit of 70s, huh? Talk about that. There's a little bit of a 70s theme in here, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, whenever we start with the job, we, we have a discussion what is really the, let's say, the, the characteristics we would like to achieve. And uh, then we said, 
the car should become more muscular and should look more compact. And we looked at the history and uh, found out that the 930, the first turbo, is really the car that inspired us a lot with its extended uh, wheel arches and this uh, narrow waist and this very expressive Coke bottle uh, shape. So that was really the car we had all the time with us in the studio. Sounds cool. Little pit stop with you, please, Michael. I want to introduce now an individual that's had, uh, I mean, he's got one of the best nicknames ever. Can you imagine having a nickname called Mr. 911? I mean, that's a pretty cool nickname, isn't it? 15 years he's been involved in the last three lines of the 911. Please welcome on stage August Ackleiner. August. <laughs> I want to bring you to the rear of the car, please, August. Yeah, yeah. Because we know the Porsche 911 has always been rear engine. Goes against a little bit of weight distribution and all these things, which I know a little bit about, but in terms of the icon of the 911, it's always been leader of class, leader in, in, its, yeah. in its segment, and this beautiful balance between track and street. But what have we done, and, and how's the focus still going to make sure that we're still on pole position when it comes to rear engine high performance street cars? Yeah, sometimes in the, um, people say in the past, well, that's the biggest disadvantage of this car, the weight distribution, because the engine is in the back of the car. But in my opinion, that's the biggest advantage of the car, because the whole thing here in German, we say, here plays the music in the 911, exactly in this range. Yep. Here's the engine, here's the gearbox, here's the rear axle, now, by the way, with 21-inch wheels. Yeah. And you still have luggage compartment and you can put your children here inside and to be honest, I got two kids in the meantime. In the meantime, two engineers working at Porsche and they grew up exactly here. Oh, there you go. Good homework. Good R&D project. Yeah. Michael, August just quickly mentioned about the wheels. So yep. we're 20 on the front, 21 on the rear. I know your designers love big wheels. I like big wheels too, but they've got to be functional, right? I mean, in terms of aerodynamics and also rolling resistance, what's the idea around this uh, wheel combination on the new generation I mean, car? With the power and performance of this car, you know very well, I mean, uh, you should have uh, good aerodynamics, otherwise uh, it turns or uh, becomes more uh, kind of airplane. So I would say the tricky thing was that we wanted to keep the surfaces very clean on that car. So uh, I think it was more challenging for the aerodynamic guys that they had to do all their arrangements, uh, let's say, invisible. And yes, it goes without saying, I mean, designers uh, love big wheels. Uh, but in that case, even the guys from the chassis department uh, were, let's say, in the front line because uh, they, they had to make sure that the car gets the power on the tarmac. Yeah. And we, we, we didn't argue, so we... No, I'm, I'm happy. I like, I like the 21-inch rear tire. It looks good. August. Yeah. Oliver Bloomer mentioned in his speech about the software and the special wet map systems that we have, uh, which I was with you a few weeks ago only testing that on the PG track, which was very impressive. One of the most, most advanced traction control systems I've ever experienced in my life, including racing. Quickly just run us through why and how we got to the solution on, on this car. Uh, well, you know, a sports car is, uh, is not just a heavy car, it's quite a light car, but uh, simultaneously it's equipped with uh, wide tires. And this uh, combination, not such a heavy car, wide tires, and then maybe heavy rain, very uh, much water on the road, is not such a good combination. And we wanted to improve the behavior of the car during these conditions and uh, uh, found out, out uh, of our pre-development um, a new wet mode. And uh, the spectacular thing is the car detects by itself, by sensors within the wheelhouse, how much water is on the road. There's a sensor in the wheel arch. Right? In, in the wheel arch, yep. yeah. And um, depending on the frequencies the, uh, these are caused by the water, um, the uh, stability systems um, um, adapted to these conditions, especially ABS and traction control, and simultaneously it shows to the driver, please put on the wet mode, and when um, the driver does it, then uh, the spoiler comes up to produce more downforce, and the, when you have a C4 model, there's more torque uh, transmitted to the front axle just to, to keep the car as stable as possible. But I have to, one, to mention one thing, 
you should not switch off your brain. It's yeah. still up to you to have this the perfect uh, speed under yeah, these sure. conditions. That's what the racing drivers do. Absolutely. Racing drivers switch their brain off. I think that's a very good system for the UK because it rains there all the time, doesn't it? So that will be yeah. that will work well. Michael, is it possible to quickly show us through? No, no. I just want to have a quick look you through the interior. Yeah. That's okay. Do, oh, you want to do the yellow one? Let's, the let's yellow. have a look in the yellow one. Let's do that. The yellow car is it looks not... nice. Let's do the yellow one. Yeah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we're just going to have a look through why and how Michael and his team will put the ignition on so you can have a bit of a, a look at the, the lighting. Uh, I Run mean, us through the, the streamlined dashboard you have here. Yeah, I mean, uh, for us, the Porsche, the driver is always in the focus of our, of our job. Uh, and uh, it's really, we try to arrange everything that uh, the whole user experience and user interface really supports the driver driving. And again, the, the tricky part was balancing this, what we, we called uh, to create this uh, analog precision in combination with this digital experience. Mm. And I think we found a pretty good way. You have this uh, very sophisticated touch screens on one hand, and on the other side, you have as well just very traditional switches. When designing the car, who is the driver you had in mind? I mean, there's not one special person that's more different categories you know person that uh, just uh, enjoy easy driving and enjoy the look of the car then you have people using the car as a daily driver uh, take uh, the car over the weekend on the road trip and then you have uh, let's say the the really ambitious drivers that are even yeah. able to to drive the car up to the limit um, yeah, maybe like uh, former uh, Formula One drivers, well, uh, maybe. like Ellen yeah. Prost yeah. and yeah, yeah. these <laughs> guys. <laughs> yes, well, there's a long list. They all have them. They all have them. August, it's uh, the last generation car that you're going to work on. So I imagine this is a, a car that's extremely close to your heart. So what's your feelings on working on, the, on this model line yeah, for the last time? It's always a, um, a very exciting moment for me to present a new 911 and the first one which I presented had been the 997 several years ago. So it's uh, the third generation I present and will be my last. Uh, but um, I'm completely happy to present it here, especially in California, because here, in my opinion, here are the biggest Porsche fans and 911 fans yeah. all over the world with this density of, of fans here. So it's a really pleasure for me and an, an honor to present this car here. And, yeah, well, now I have to say, just have fun with things in this car. Absolutely. Well, your team have done an absolutely incredible job. I think that, uh, as you said at the top, it's a very, very tough project. Uh, and also, I want to add that uh, never at any point have we had more females driving 911s when it comes to elegance and power and timeless style. This is what we have, and we have Maria Sharapova here, our brand ambassador, so it's nice. Please give Maria a round of applause. So it's a car for everyone, and uh, yeah, thank you very much, guys. If you want to take a seat, and um, thank you. See, you, see you at the bar. Okay. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's one thing that we haven't spoken about with the Porsche 911, we've covered pretty much everything. And that's sound, acoustics. You heard the unbelievable sound system when the, when the cars come through on the, on the demonstration there. But Walter Roll, our racing legend, our Porsche friend, said once, quote, the loveliest sound of all is starting the engine. That deep bumbling, simply unforgettable. So I'd like to ask Army again, you can come back on the stage, buddy. Sound, you're in the movie, sound, Dramatic, cinematics, acoustics. What's the 911 sound for you? I mean, he's right. When you, when you start a 911, it's such a distinctive note, you, you hear it. Uh, if you're driving a car and you get passed, which if someone is driving a 911, they will pass you, yeah. uh, you, you, you can recognize the engine note always. Uh, it's, it's got such a wonderful sound coming out of that straight six, and it's, it's, it's distinctive. They, you can hear the history behind it. You can hear the sound of the car. It, it, it sounds aggressive and warm, but also you can pull up and it's understated, but if you get on it, yeah. you know, it makes a terrific noise. 
When you first come on, you said your wife didn't let you buy one. Yeah. So you're under pressure now. I mean, you have to buy one of these, don't you? Or not? Yeah, where do I put my credit card? Let's, let's well, do this right now. There's a credit card machine on the way out. Perfect. So, uh, is this color okay? Can I sleep at your house it's for the next tough... couple of days? Is I that all right? I don't have a house here, mate. I don't have a house here. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the color's okay? Yeah, the color's fine. Good. Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, I'd take it in any color at this <laughs> yeah, point. Yeah, no worries. Honest. August mentioned as well, I mean, the knowledgeable audience that we have here yeah. in the West Coast and in, in California here of, of the enthusiasts and just so much uh, background of Porsche yeah. in this part of the world, you know, yeah. Southern California linked to Southern Germany. It's amazing how the, the love for yeah. this brand is so deep in this part of the world, isn't it? Yeah. You know, uh, if, if, you, if you have a fantastic car like this, you want to be able to drive it. And arguably, Southern California has some of the best roads. I mean, you've got the canyons, you've got the PCH driving down next to the ocean on this with your windows down. You get the ocean breeze. You hear the sound of your car. It, it all goes part and parcel for just a terrific experience of being behind the wheel and enjoying the car. Well, thank you very much, man. I totally agree. If it's okay, buddy, you can uh, final little round of applause for can I, Army. Can please. I actually Thanks. just, can I stay next to the car you can do, for you a can, little you bit can, longer? You can do what you want, mate. You can do what you want. So, uh, so that really wraps up uh, our formalities out here. I just want to mention that the board members now will be available for, for, for photographs. We're going to uh, open up the workshops. They're going to be available for you to, to go through with all of our Porsche experts. Uh, the historical section as well, go through the journey of that, have a look at how uh, extensive that is. We've got the best guys in the world to run you through that as well. Uh, the new apps that Oliver Bloomer spoke about, the 360 Plus and also the Road Trip app and also the, the Impact program that he mentioned about, you can have a little bit more information on that. My personal favourite is the VR, put the goggles on, take the car for a lap around the track, which is pretty... Pretty sensational, so give that a bit of a blast. Uh, and the workshops, actually, back to those, they run every 30 minutes, so they are rotating through. So really have a look at those. They're in Spanish, Chinese, English, and German. So got everything covered. No Australian, but I can help you out with that if you want. And uh, there's plenty of food and a little bit of drink, so please have a really special night, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the Porsche executives are now available for photo opportunities on stage.